She was a reality TV star. There's no way I'm leaving this house without a surgery. A successful teacher, loving wife, I loved her tremendously. And this could be the last man to see her alive. I'm not gonna lie, I do, I, I did like her. According to her big sister, Danny, Lisa Marie Nagel had a charm most found hard to resist. She just exuded fun and light, and she just had such a light about her. She was, she really was truly the life of the party. She was late to the party, but she was the life of the party. That light certainly caught the eye of Derek Harriman. I've never really met anybody like her. You know, she was a nurse, teacher, you know, and she just had a lot of goals. And I admired that from day one. You know, I was just so proud of her. And I, I'm, I'm still proud of her. But before they tied the knot, Lisa surprised everyone with a bombshell. She was going to compete on a reality TV show called Bridal Plasty, a show that awarded reconstructive surgery to its brides-to-be. That reality show she did, she just thought it was, I mean, we can't even laugh. We were like, just lose a little weight, you know, you know, you get like liposuction or anything. But she just was like, oh my gosh, it'd be so much fun. And at the end, they would get their dream wedding. And so she was thought it was a win-win for her. For better or worse, Lisa was spared the knife and eliminated, but she and Derek still enjoyed a storybook wedding in Hawaii, surrounded by friends and family. Maui! Lisa pursued a career in nursing, earning a master's degree and becoming a popular nursing instructor at a local LA college. But she hoped her greatest accomplishment was just around the corner. She was planning to be a mom. I loved her tremendously. Everybody loved Lisa because she had a huge heart and Huge, huge soul. You know, everybody loved Lisa. Which makes her disappearance all the more baffling. It was a Saturday night shortly before last Christmas when Lisa decided to attend a friend's party here at a restaurant and watering hole called Alpine Village. She just mentioned, hey, I'm going to a birthday party and I just want to let you know that I'm going with my brother, Raphael. And, and I, I, I trusted my wife. I trusted where she went. I trusted the people that she was with. So I didn't question her. I'm like, OK, thanks for letting me know. Uh, we'll talk to you later. She had told her husband she was supposed to go with my older brother, Rafael. But my brother was too tired, and he's like, I'm too old to <laughs> keep up with you. As reported by our Los Angeles affiliate KTLA, Lisa attended the party with Jackie Jerome Rogers, seen here in this photo from TMZ. Rogers was apparently her friend and former nursing student. We have no problems with gay people, but he looked gay. And she even referred to him as, this is my gay friend. Derek says he also met Rogers on one occasion, although it was at 3 in the morning when both he and Lisa were working nights. Uh, I was getting off work. I had came to my house, and uh, he was, like, leaving at the same time I was coming in. And I, I kind of, like, freaked out a little bit because I didn't know if that was a burglar or what was going on. So I'm like, hey, well, stay right there. Don't move. Lisa, Lisa, what's going on? Who is this person? And she explained to me, hey, this is my student. You know, she, you know, she was helping him out as a, a student teacher, and uh, he seemed like a nice individual. This selfie was shot by Lisa Marie that night at Alpine Village as she partied into the wee hours. I came home that, that morning at 1.30 in the morning. She wasn't home. I was really upset she wasn't here, so I, I lit her up on a text message. I'm like, this is BS. You're supposed to be here, blah, blah, blah. Mad. She immediately called me within like 30 seconds. And I'm like, wow, that was fast. She's going to start yelling at me now or something, right? But she's like, hey, I just want to let you know everything's fine. I'm, I already left the party. I'm going to go get some food, and I'll be home soon. So I'm like, OK, cool. But it was far from cool. I uh, woke up the next morning, she wasn't here, and uh, I still didn't think anything was wrong. I thought, oh, she must have just crashed at her brother's house, you know, then she went straight to work. But later that day, Derek receives a call from Lisa's co-worker wondering where she is. And that's when I'm like, that's when I knew something was wrong. Lisa's concerned family quickly contacts LAPD for help. The LAPD just immediately said that they don't do anything until 72 hours later. Crime Watch Daily contacted the LAPD, whose spokesperson says he has no knowledge of what the family was told. He says the 72-hour waiting period is a myth. Either way, Lisa's tight-knit family was not going to sit at home waiting three days for an answer.
that's why we were like, we cannot wait 72 hours. I mean, everybody's watched some kind of show or a movie or something that says the first 24 hours, the first 48 hours are so crucial. Lisa Marie Nagel is missing. Last seen here, living it up at a friend's birthday party. But when the family says the LAPD insists on waiting 72 hours to look for her, acclaimed cops deny, the Nagel family starts its own investigation. First step, talk to the man who took Lisa to the party, one of her nursing students, Jackie Jerome Rogers, seen here in this photo from TMZ. According to the family, Rogers tells them Lisa left the bar for an after party. And we were just trying to figure out like what after party? but everybody at the party told me there was no after party. Adding to the confusion, the conversation Lisa had with her husband, Derek, that night. She did sound like she had a few drinks that night. You know, she was having a good time, it sounded like. Lisa also told him she was grabbing a bite to eat and heading home. So what happened from the time she shot this video and the time she was on her way home? And whom was she with? Family friend Virginia Moya offers to go looking for surveillance video from the bar. And one of the managers came and his daughter was standing next to him. And he was very hesitant to let me see it. And he says, well, you know, we're having our Christmas party right now with the staff. And can you come back tomorrow and, and uh, I'll show it to you. And I said, well, you know, she's, she's missing today and she's somebody's daughter, and you know, they're really looking for her. And he said, okay, I think he let me see it because his daughter was standing next to him. So Virginia went mm -hmm. to Alpine Village and she was the detective, so to she speak, really on the surveillance. She really was. She is, to me, she's, she was my sister's guardian angel because if not, where would she be? At the same time Virginia's pouring over footage, Lisa's family invites Jackie Rogers to the house for a little chat. My brother Rafael found out that um, Jackie was who took my sister to the party. I want to know who this man is who swears that, you know, took her to a party and wouldn't take her home. And so we asked him to come to the house and he came to our house. Here's Rogers in the Nagel's living room about to face the heat. And so once he came, my mom's like, well, I want to give me your address. And I, so I took his driver's license. I took a picture of his driver's license. I took it from him. My brother came and said, let me see your hands. Well, like this, put both your hands out. And took pictures of his hands. Roger swears he doesn't know anything. I have nothing to hide from anyone. But Lisa's mother, Dolores, has a bad feeling from the start. I'll do anything for her, like I'm dead serious. You wanted him here. I want him, him here. And when I saw his eyes, I already see something bad. You saw evil in his eyes? Uh-huh, evil in his eyes. Remember how Lisa told her sister that Rogers was, quote, her gay friend? Well, now he claims they were romantically involved. I'm gonna get personal, are you guys having relations? Yeah, we have relations, yes. When Jackie says that he and Lisa Marie had an affair, you say what? I can't believe it. Incredible as it may sound, while Rogers is being grilled in the family room, Danny receives a text from Virginia. She's hit pay dirt. I text Danny a, a picture of the person, and I said, she left with this person. And she said, Virginia, are you sure? Because he's here. He's here in my living room. And I was like, what? That's Lisa on the left, leaving the bar with Rogers, and there's more. In the surveillance video, it clearly shows my sister getting into his car. They leave together, and that's when we knew, okay, wait a second, now you, you lied. So your brother got in Jackie's face and was like, no, Saying no. you're lying, you lied to us, you lied. Whatever it is, you lied, so just tell us where she's at. So then I went to his car, I took pictures of his license plate, I went to his car, and his car was impeccably clean. Nothing, nothing, nothing in his trunk. Like, I went through the whole thing, zero. Do you think he cleaned it to remove any evidence? I know so.
The Nagel family calls LAPD again, and this time they show up right at the same time our affiliate KTLA is there to interview Lisa's distraught husband. There's video footage that was just discovered from Alpine Village within the last hour showing my wife getting into a black SUV. They shot this footage of Rogers speaking with police and waiting to be let go. But police said they couldn't take him just for a lie. And I was begging him, I'm like, check his car. What man, what person has a car like that? Finally convinced, police take Rogers in for questioning. And I guess once he was there at the station, he, I heard that after a couple hours, when they had the right detectives talking to him, he confessed. Cops won't confirm the details, but be forewarned, they are disturbing. He did take her after the party, he took her to Jack in the Box, and Derek said that he received a phone call because he was like, why aren't you home? It's like two in the morning. I remember I was still angry with her on the phone. I'm like, why, where the hell are you, you know? Why aren't you here right now? And she completely didn't even listen to me, and she, she was all super happy and just threw me off. I'm like, dude, I just gave you a ration of crap, and you're still acting so sweet and happy right now. Like, why are you so happy? And she, maybe that was her way of telling me goodbye or something. I don't know, because I, I don't know. I don't know what to think. I, I, I want to think of a positive last conversation with my wife, <laughs> because what else do I have, you know? And they got food. I guess he must have convinced her to sit and eat first, and then during eating, he took a hammer to her. He says he hit her seven times in the head while she was eating fast food. Hit her in the head with a hammer while sitting in the car eating a hamburger? The family wonders what in the world Lisa could have done to trigger that kind of rage. But the horror's not over. Rogers reportedly told police he then took Lisa back to his house he shares with his mother, washed her body in bleach, and buried her in the backyard in a shallow grave. He took off all her clothing, supposedly sanitized her, and then buried her. Crime Watch Daily reached out several times to Roger's attorney for comment on the family's account of the alleged confession, and none of our calls were returned. I mean, he's destroyed our family. She was, she was my baby sister that I felt like I needed to protect. She was a daughter to my mom, her baby. My dad just turned 80, and he didn't want to blow out the birthday candles. He didn't feel he had the right to keep living when his daughter passed away. It was the darkest, saddest, most angry place that I've ever been in my entire life. But so many questions remain unanswered. Most important, why would Rogers kill Lisa? I honestly don't believe that there was an affair deep in my heart. Um, whether or not there truly was one, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. But I just never had any suspicions. There weren't any red flags in our in our relationship or marriage through the last six months that would make me believe that there was was an affair. Why do you think he would have done this? I have no clue. I have no clue. The only thing I would think is that he became obsessed with her. He said that they had a relationship. Yeah, I know. He's saying that they had like an affair or that she was breaking up with him that night. I feel that he's saying this to help get like a crime of passion or to lower the, the sentencing to try to say like, hey, you know, I was so into her, she's dumping me and this is what I'm doing. The Nagel family also wonders if Rogers acted alone. Remember that photo they took of his hands? Go like this, put both your hands up. And my family is like a very working family. And so we've all known how to like dig and he had no, blisters. I mean, if you would have blisters on your hand and he had nothing. And that's where like the stuff that's so hard for me to understand is that it, I don't believe he could have even digged up a grave that quickly, even if it was shallow. He really got exist. I ask him now. He has to pay what he did. You know, people will say like we need justice, but there is no justice. I lost her. There's no justice to that. Life in jail or anything else is not going to bring her back, and it's not going to make me feel any better.